In the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, really thankful to him for another opportunity to be sharing his word with us over here this morning. It's just something special about the songs that we sang this morning as we lifted our hearts in praise to the Lord Jesus. All my ways are known to him. I know that many times we go through life and things that, and we think that we we all on our own, and there's um, no one knows the struggles and the stuff that we 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 are going through. But that song reminded us that all our ways are known to Him. And in that second song over there, which speaks about the goodness of God and how that is. His goodness and His mercy and His love just follows us and uh, doesn't matter where we go, we can't go from His presence or we can't flee from His presence, but His goodness just just follows us. And it reminds me of that 10-minute poem by uh, Francis Thompson um, entitled The Hound of Heaven. And it speaks about how Jesus pursues us, how God pursues us, how he, he has this marvelous plan for our lives and, and he won't let us go. He keeps coming after us until we, until we collapse in his arms in surrender to him. Before we start our service, our sermon this morning, or our little talk this morning, why don't we just bow our heads in a word of prayer as we, as we invite him to be with us. That this might not just be another service, that this might not just be another program or another, another sermon, but that this morning that God by his Holy Spirit will come and stir within our hearts deep desires after him, um, um, that we might know him in his fullness and that we might, and that we might just know him um, and all that there is to know. Come, let's just pray together. Our Lord and our God, how we, we worship you. Our hearts continue in worship. The songs might have ended, but the worship from our hearts continue this morning. Receive our praise, Father. Receive the worship and the adoration from our hearts. Oh, we would invite you this morning to come and be here with us. We pray that we might feel your presence in such a wonderful and real way that as we listen to your words that our ears would burn with your breath as you speak into us um, over here this morning. Come and do it for us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Life happens it's a phrase that people often use when responding to someone who has had an experience outside of their control. It's normally a response to a, a negative experience. Uh, for example, maybe someone has lost a job or uh, you've um, lost a friendship or you ended a relationship or uh, you've had a break in in your house and it leaves you with that feeling of the, um, you, you know, your personal space has been invaded or, or, or the occurrence of anything unforeseen for which there isn't a ready explanation and, and people would, would respond and they'd say, oh, you know what? Life happens. But what if that saying wasn't completely true? What if what happens to us in life, whether good or bad, served a wider purpose, a purpose, of gre purpose greater than our own comfort, convenience or happiness? My talk this morning is centered around Philippians chapter 1, um, um, and I've entitled it Finding Opportunity in the Inconvenient. Finding Opportunity in the Inconvenient, and the aim is to encourage us to find the rewards that God has for us, even in the difficult times of life. Won't you page with me then to the passage as, as we read it together? Philippians chapter 1, from verse 12 to verse 20. Philippians chapter 1, from verse 12 to verse 20. 
And it's uh, uh, taken from Paul's letter to uh, the Philippians. If you've been around the fellowship for some time, you might remember that a couple of months ago, I started um, speaking from the book of Philippians chapter 1, um, and we were speaking about how we ought to um, uh, um, uh, connect or associate with people who believe what we believe, but they express it differently. Um, so this is maybe just a, a continuation in Philippians. Let me read for you uh, Philippians chapter 1 from verse 12 to verse 20 or 21. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me was really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that as always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. And then that famous verse, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. <coughs> Boy. <coughs> in this passage, Paul, <coughs> Paul writes to the church in Philippi about some of his life happened moments. Let me just drink. In this passage, Paul writes to the church in Philippi about some of his life happens moments. His circumstances were not appealing. Things were not going well. He had been victimized by an illegal trial. He had been arrested and placed in, on a ship heading uh, to Rome. En route, they were shipwrecked. When they eventually arrived in Rome, he is sent to prison. There were chains around his arms and legs. His circumstances and conditions were less than desirable. And in addition to these physical conditions, Paul also needed to deal with the emotional discomfort of knowing the rejection of some Christian uh, communities. His own brothers in the faith didn't want to have him around. In fact, some preachers were jealous of him and were rather glad that their competition was out of the way. How would we have responded to Paul? Like you know, Paul, life happens. Just suck it up. There's nothing that you can do about it. Just ride out the storm. I'm glad that we didn't have an opportunity to respond uh, to Paul. But I want us just to, for uh, a few brief moments, to look at Paul's response to uh, this difficult time over here. I'd like to mention maybe three things that Paul was aware of during this difficult time, during this time of imprisonment. Firstly, this morning, Paul was aware of the challenges 
that were awaiting him. Paul was aware of the challenges that were awaiting, awaiting him. In Acts chapter 21 verse 13, Paul writes and he says, I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. He knew that it wasn't going to be an easy time and it might even cost him his life. Paul didn't allow himself to come under any false illusion that this time ahead was going to be a walk in the park. He knew it was going to be difficult. He was aware of the challenges that lay ahead. But the second thing over, here, over there this morning was that Paul was aware of his purpose. Paul was aware of his purpose. Acts chapter 20 verse 24 says, However, I consider my life worth nothing if only I might finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me. The task of testifying to the gospel of grace. Paul was sold out to God. There was no half-hearted, wishy-washy, part-time, when it suited him type of commitment. There was a total commitment to the purposes of God for his life. He knew his purpose and he was willing to die for it. But thirdly this morning, uh, the third thing that Paul was aware of is this. Paul was aware of his blessing. Paul was aware of of his blessing. Back to the passage that we just read, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 13 says this. He says, and it's again Paul speaking, he says, It has become clear throughout the whole palace God and to all who are here that I am in chains for the gospel. You see, Paul lived and was willing to die for the gospel and nothing blessed him more than when his purpose was being fulfilled. The more he shared the gospel, the happier he would be. Something very interesting I noticed over the in verse, uh, verse 13, just a little footnote on verse 13. When it speaks about the whole palace God, it says this, that whole palace God, and to us it just sounds as if oh, there were a couple of guys, but the whole palace God was a contingency of soldiers numbering a few thousand, numbering a few thousand. His prison became a pulpit to extend uh, the spread of the gospel. What a blessing. At the risk of sounding overly dramatic this morning, may I ask you, what imprisons you this morning? Now, I'm obviously not talking Paul Small or Victor Fester or Robin Island. But are you perhaps imprisoned by, by past failures? Stuff that happened in the past that you just can't seem to let go and it keeps you and it holds you and it renders you ineffective in all that you're seeking to do for God. Past failures. Maybe you are in the prison of public opinion. That the opinion of others and uh, the thoughts of other people about you just holds you fast that you cannot do all that you know God intended you to do. The prison of public opinion. Someone once said that what other people think about you is none of your business. Maybe you are in um, the prison of pain. Maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe there's something that is, uh, that is bothering you and you might have been struggling it for many days, many weeks, many months, or even many years. Is there, are you being held in the prison of, of painful challenges? Maybe you just held, like all of us, in that prison of the present lockdown. I want to say to you this morning that God is able to make all things work together to advance His good news. He's just that kind of a God. He wants, uh, he wants to and is able to take the inconveniences of life and turn them into huge public platforms that will scream out the gospel 
the good news that, that he loves, that he accepts, that he desires relationship with you. As we face our life happens moments, I would like to encourage us to take an example from the Apostle Paul uh, this morning. That firstly, we will remain, we will remain aware of our, our challenges. I'm not suggesting that we become so fixated on the difficulties that surround us that it renders us paralyzed. Nor am I saying that we ought to stick our heads in the sand and pre pretend that they're not there. I think it's healthy to remember we live in a fallen world and there will be hard times. It was our Lord Jesus who said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Or maybe we could take Paul's example and remain aware of our purpose. Why are we here? What is the specific task God has given you in the days in which we live? You don't know? Well, ask him. He wants to tell you. And then thirdly, remain aware of our blessings. Remain aware of our blessings. Don't let us as God's people ever become ungrateful. It's an old song and it's been around for centuries because it's true and it goes like this. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. May God help us to seek out opportunities in moments of inconvenience, whatever they might be, whatever inconvenience you might be going through, I trust that God will help you and I to seek out opportunities to praise Him, to bless Him, and to be all that He intended for us to be in this moment in time, in this place that He has placed us. Amen. We're going to close off our service this morning by singing a, a wonderful song, and it's just so in tune with what we um, have heard um, over here this morning, and it's that song by City Light that says that He is the Ancient of Days. He is the one that has been here since the beginning, and He always will be. And He's not just here, but He's here for us. Let's sing this last song together.